I want this thing to circle back again. You say, why in the world do you have fun at church? I met Jesus. I literally met Jesus. I'm this way everywhere. Don't you think I'm not? You meet me in Walmart, I'll talk to you about revelation knowledge of the kingdom of God. Everywhere I go, I talk about it. I can't help it. I don't talk about it all the time. You know, if, if the door's not open or if there's not an opportunity, I don't. But I don't mind. I'm the same everywhere. Are you stupid everywhere? Yeah, I'm stupid everywhere. And I'm lovey everywhere. And I'm praising God everywhere. And I'm talking about the kingdom of God everywhere. And I'll take a joke now and then everywhere. And I'll sing you a country song right here behind the podium. And don't you dare look down your nose at me because you're wrong. I'm free. And Jesus is my Lord. And I refuse and I will never go back into bondage again. After I met Jesus, he set me free. I was caught up out of my body, and I met the Lord one day. I was laying in the living room of our house, and another minister was there. And I was laying back on the couch in a casual, relaxed way, and we were talking back and forth. And Judy, uh, I had uh, been to, I'll tell you how long ago it's been, it used to be a Safeway in Idabel. And uh I went to Safeway and I found some foot-long hot dogs. Well, I just got introduced not too many years earlier to the Sonic with his foot-long hot dogs. Never had one in my life. Never dreamed that I would actually be acquainted. Even like yesterday, the lady called me that her and her husband started Sonic and they owned a franchise worldwide. And she called me yesterday. Hope she ain't watching. Hope we don't put it up she watches. She's 90, going on 91 years old. And she's full of the Holy Ghost. Wanting to talk about Jesus. Wanting to, and she wants me to talk to her about the kingdom of God. Oh man, we have a good time. Amen? Now, use that foot long hot dog. Boy, I thought that's great. Chili on it. Well, onions. Boy, I love that. Boy, if you can leave there with your breast smelling like onions, that was a part of the, I mean, that was a move of God itself. I mean, it was so good, I'd eat onions before I go to church when I become a pastor just to lay hands on people and watch them fall out. <laughs> well, not quite, but anyhow, so here we were in that, I was in that living room and our friend was there, a minister of God and that has passed on since. And, uh, and I thought, hey, Judy, I said, can you, do you have anything you can fix that foot-long hot dog with? She said, yeah, I do. I bought some stuff. Da, da, da. So she got went into the kitchen fixing a foot-long hot dog or two or three of them or whatever. And I was laid back on that couch, and the lights got ooh, real dim like a power surge pull on it. I thought, that's strange, and got bright again. Then it got, mm, the second time it got real dim, it shot back bright. And a little bit, mm, it got dim a third time, and when it, I was gone. I was caught out of my body. And what was strange is I was caught up in the natural seemingly atmosphere above our house, and it was night, and I was looking down up on the roof. I was about a hundred feet up looking down. And I remember looking out the countryside around, I think, boy, it's dark out there through the woods and all of that. And all of a sudden, just like you maybe picture in the Bible, a ring of angels appear about 100 yards up in the air all the way around me, just with lights glowing. They were all glowing. And I watched that, and I watched all of these angels go down, and go into our house. And when I watched that, then suddenly I was caught way to another place. I don't know where it was. There was no familiar surroundings. And I began to look. And it was somewhat, I don't know, it's kind of foggy, to so to speak. I couldn't see clearly. And I think I couldn't see clearly because 
I was seeing through a glass darkly. I couldn't see clearly because I have not arrived at that point of understanding. And, but I knew, and I looked around, and there seemed to be like it were classrooms, but they weren't classrooms. There were rooms, and there was people in there that I, that I knew were passed away. And they seemed to be learning something. And all of a sudden, there's this long hallway, and it was a little bit dense with the kind of a fog, but I could see a figure walking toward me, and I knew in my knowing it was Jesus. And as he began to approach, the closer I got, the more I become totally transparent with my life. And as he got to me, I looked into his face. And I'll never forget this because I couldn't see his face. It looked like the face of a thousand people. It was ever face there was in one. I can't explain it. It's in a spiritual realm. You have to be in the spirit to understand it. I couldn't see it, but I could see it. But it was the face of people. And he began to share with me the things of the kingdom of God. Some of the things I'm preaching now, he shared with me then. I, I, it took me all these years to get to it. Because I couldn't get to it. And he began to speak to me. And it was wonderful things, revelation, understanding of how things operated. And I want you to know that I was so amazed how simple everything was in that realm. It was so simple. Complicated problems on earth at that moment was so simple to solve. And I felt that simplicity of solving situations. And he was talking to me and sharing with me. And since my body is still on the couch, right? It's just my spirit's caught up. My ears started working and I heard Judy in the kitchen banging around on dishes, fixing that foot-long hot dog. Now get this. And my mind slipped from listening to the Lord as he was sharing with me. And I got to thinking about what I was hearing and about, don't we do that a lot? Well, I did it there. Because my body was still here. And I began to think about, what, well, she's, oh, she's getting that. Uh, and the Lord suddenly stopped. And with a very stern voice, he said, do you really love hot dogs that well? And I knew what that meant. I don't have to explain it. You know what it meant. His words, I'll never forget, went into my thoughts. And I felt his words because he asked the question, do you really love hot dogs that well? And it went in, and those words began to go down through me. And I felt them going all the way down to my feet. And when his words got to my feet, I felt that question coming up. And I knew once it got to my heart, my mouth was going to speak the truth no matter what it was. I wanted to say, no. But I knew the truth was going to come out. And when it got to my heart and spoke out my mouth, I said, yes. And I'll never forget this. This is what set me free. Jesus laughed. You hear what I said? He laughed. Even him speaking that to me, letting it go through me, was him showing me something. He didn't care. But when it come back up, and it come out my mouth, 
he laughed, and I was delivered from religion that day. From that day forward, I was no longer afraid to approach the Lamb of God. He wasn't mad at me no matter what. And I know his presence is so welcome in my life because I'm not afraid that at some point I'm going to slide over and he's going to slap me into the corner and say, shame, shame, shame on you. I've been so good to you and you've been so rotten. I'm going to walk away and turn my back on you until you straighten up. You get over all that junk that religion tries to cram into you. You quit trying to be good. You say, well, you won't believe what I just did wrong. Take what you did wrong, put it in his hands, ask him to forgive you, and keep your communication and your fellowship open. He already knows. He walked this life. He didn't sin, but he watched plenty of it. He saw the weaknesses of people. He knew that you needed the strength greater than the fall. You need the strength of the resurrection. And this is what he's offering to you and I. And here's what God said, and I'm going to end it with this, okay? Robert's getting hungry. Shannon's getting hungry. Even Gary is thinking about it. But thank God. You're getting hungry, about to pass out. I see it. You know, don't pass out. Okay. Yeah, hang in like a hair in a biscuit. Does people like to ruin your meal by talking about hair? Yeah, okay. Just wondering. So, here's what he said. The doorposts and the thresholds of your home are about to shake and be filled with God's glory. Psalms 40 and verse 3 in the Amplified says, He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear with great reverence and will trust confidently in the Lord. So there is a new song for a new day, and it's the hope that we're pouring into that mode to produce what our desires are. God has given us great hope to pour into that. that that's that mode that we have Excuse me, that's that mold that we have built. Your images of what God has promised you. And God has got the faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith will always come when you hear the word of God. And you take that jello and you pour it into that mold and you chill it and you get what you got ready for. Don't take your faith and pour it out on the cabinet because it splatters and runs everywhere and you lose it. And don't take your, your mold, your hope, and put it in the cabinet for you don't have nothing to do with it. Take your hope, get it out of that hidden place, and lay it out and say, God, this is my hope. This is what I want to see happen in my life, in my kid's life, in my grandkid's life, in the church's life, in my friend's life, on the job. Where am I? Here's my hope. Right there it is. Right there it is. Now, here's my faith. I believe that when I say and I confess the word of God, declare the kingdom of God, I'm pouring my jello into, come on now, into my hope. And that faith will come alive and it will produce what? I get ready for. Amen. A song of hope and freedom. It's a song of expectancy. It's time to move forward. Time to step into a new day. Amen. A new area of change agents. You are a change agent for the kingdom of God. I said you are a change agent for the kingdom of God. It's time that the change agents bring Change. God has ordained you. God has anointed you to be a change agent, to bring change in your life, starting with in your family's life, and then those around you's life. You are a change agent. God has anointed you to bring change. Amen. So the winds of change that are being sent to commission us into a new era where change agents, winds are blowing. Amen. The dry bones are coming alive. Life is coming alive in you and I. And the peace of God and the will of God, the purpose of God, the plan of God is starting to be on display in the kingdom of God. And God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Heaven is starting to manifest into this realm. Allow it to come through you. Amen. And I want to stop it with that. Get ready for your weather to change out of nowhere as God now finishes what he started. Someone say, I'm ready for God to finish what he started. Hey, get ready for something to suddenly, suddenly come. Amen. Get ready. Just like on the day of Pentecost. 
suddenly there come a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. The very breath that God has already breathed on you, the word he's already spoken to you, it's time for a suddenly the wind of God, that's a rushing mighty wind to come in and bring it to futition. Amen. Well, amen. Well, let's...